Passive solar energy gain. Passive solar technologies absorb heat from the sun via thermal mass, cause ventilation via cooling tubes and operable windows with little use of any electrical energy. In physics, the second law of thermodynamics says that heat flows naturally from a higher temperature to a lower temperature, and heat doesn't flow in the opposite direction of its own accord. The law is certainly borne out in everyday observation. When was the last time you noticed an object getting colder than its surroundings unless another object was doing some kind of work? You can force heat to flow away from an object when it would naturally flow into it if you do some work, as with refrigerators or air conditioners, but heat doesn't go in that direction by itself. Some passive systems use a small amount of conventional energy to control dampers, shutters, night insulation, and other devices that enhance solar energy collection, storage, and use and reduce undesirable heat transfer. This should be avoided as a design that only utilizes the natural physics of the planet and the existing characteristics of local job site is infinitely more reliable and will never break down, ever. Solar heat gain coefficient is the fraction of solar radiation admitted through a window, door, or skylight, either transmitted directly and or absorbed, and subsequently released as heat inside a building. The lower the SHGC, the less solar heat it transmits and the greater its shading ability. A product with a high SHGC rating is more effective at collecting solar heat during the winter. A product with a low SHGC rating is more effective at reducing cooling loads during the summer by blocking heat gain from the sun. The building's climate, orientation, and external shading will determine the optimal SHGC for a particular window, door, or skylight. Passive solar technologies include direct and indirect solar gain for space heating, solar water heating systems based on lithomol siphon, use of thermal mass and phase change materials for slowing indoor air temperature swings, solar cookers, the solar chimney for enhancing natural ventilation, and earth sheltering. Direct solar gain systems. Every south-facing window creates a direct gain system, while windows facing east, west, and north lose more heat than they gain in the winter. The greenhouse effect acts as a one-way heat valve. It lets the shortwave solar energy enter but blocks the heat from escaping. The thermal mass inside the building then absorbs this heat, both to prevent daytime overheating and to store it for nighttime. The proper ratio of mass to south-facing glazing is important. Since in direct gain the building is the collector, all contents, such as the drywall, furniture, and books, act as thermal mass. However, the contents are usually not sufficient to store an adequate amount of heat without additional thermal mass. When there is no concrete floor or when even more thermal mass is desired, it can be provided in the walls, water containers, floors, or phase change materials. Although solar heat can be supplied by convection to the rooms on the north side of a building, it is much better to supply solar radiation directly by means of south-facing clear story windows. Besides bringing warming sunlight further into the building, clear stories also provide excellent daylighting, because light from above is best. Most direct gain systems consist of straight walls facing due south or as close to south as possible. Direct gain is the most efficient when energy collection and first costs are the main concerns. The Greenhouse Effect The concept of the greenhouse effect is vital for understanding both passive solar and thermal mass dynamics. The greenhouse effect is due to the fact that the type of interaction that occurs between a material and radiant energy depends on the wavelength of that radiation. The short wave solar radiation is able to pass easily through the glass, whereupon it is absorbed by indoor thermal mass and objects. As the thermal mass warms up, there is an increase in emission of radiation in the long wave portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. Since the glass is opaque to this radiation, much of the energy is trapped. The glass is created, in effect, a heat trap, and the indoor temperature begins to rise. To better understand this very important concept, we look further. First, look at the graph. Material radiation transmission, which describes the behavior of glass with respect to radiation. The percentage transmission is given as a function of the wavelength of the radiation. Notice that glass has a very high transmission for radiation between 0, 3 and 3 meters and zero transmission for radiation above and below that window. 
The next graph shows the wavelengths of the solar radiation reaching the Earth. It consists of about 5% ultraviolet, about 45% visible light, and about 50% solar infrared. This graph also shows the wavelengths of radiation emitted by objects at room temperature, which are also part of the infrared spectrum. To distinguish these from the solar infrared, they are called long wave infrared and, consequently, the solar infrared is called short wave infrared. These graphs show that the part of the electromagnetic spectrum for which glass is transparent corresponds to solar radiation, and the part for which glass is opaque corresponds to the long wave infrared heat radiation given off by thermal mass. The solar radiation enters through the glass and is absorbed by thermal mass. The thermal mass heats up and then increases the rare radiation in the long wave infrared part of the spectrum. Since glass is opaque to this radiation, much of the energy is trapped and the room heats up. This is one of the mechanisms that causes a greenhouse to warm up. The other mechanism of the greenhouse effect is the obvious fact that the glazing stops the convective loss of hot air. These mechanisms together form a very effective heat trap, sunspaces greenhouses. Sunspaces, also known as remote gain passive solar systems, are designed to collect heat for the main part of a building, as well as to serve as a secondary living area. Until recently, this design element was usually called an attached greenhouse, but that was a misleading name because growing plants is only an optional function. More appropriate terms were solarium or sunroom, but the term sunspace seems to have become most common. Sunspaces are one of the most popular passive systems, not because of their heating efficiency but because of the amenities that they offer. Most people find the semi-outdoor aspect of sunspaces extremely attractive. Almost everyone finds it pleasurable to be in a warm, sunny space on a cold winter day. Sunspaces are considered adjunct living spaces because the temperature is allowed to swing widely. On a sunny, cold day, the temperature can go as high as 90 degrees Fahrenheit during the day and cool down to 50 degrees Fahrenheit just before sunrise. A sunspace is a solar collector that can also be used as an attractive living space. A sunspace must be designed as a separate thermal zone that can be isolated from the rest of the building. Much of the heat is carried into the main building through doors, windows, or vents. The rest of the captured solar heat is absorbed into the sunspace's thermal mass such as the floor slab and the common wall. At night, the doors, windows, and vents are closed to keep the main part of the building warm. The heat stored in the thermal mass keeps the house comfortable and prevents the sunspace from freezing. Because sunspaces are generally poorly insulated and shaded, they should not be heated or cooled. Mechanical heating and cooling would require so much energy that a sunspace would become a net loser rather than a gainer of energy. Large temperature swings should be expected. And when the temperatures get extreme, the space should be temporarily closed off. However, a well-designed sunspace is a delight most of all year. The cross-section of the Beddington Zero Energy Development by architect Bill Dunster, engineers, Arup. This building is designed to maximize the south orientation and to prevent the shading of the next row of houses to the north. Since work areas need less heat than homes, Office spaces are placed on the north side of each building. Building physics, an integrated building design supporting live, workspaces and workspaces integrated near the living spaces. Form follows function. The locations of certain habitation spaces are located based on their needs and the performance of the building as an entirety, as one complete unit. Holistically, 